Buddy, it's Lynn from Lynn's Crafts. This morning's video, I've got another goddess pendant I want to share with you. I promise I'm fixing to do something different. <laughs> I'm sure you're probably sick of seeing these. I've got a resin sand dollar that I just created from a real sand dollar that I've put away now. I did one of them with uh, Amazing Mold Putty. And then I did another one with the Amazing Mold Rubber. You can capture a little more detail with the Amazing Mold Rubber. Um, it's not really significant, but you probably can tell a difference. Alright, I've got this um, DecoArt Media Antiquing Cream. And this is in the mm -hmm, uh, raw umber. Sorry. And I've got some sand. This is just um, sand. It actually came from Michael's, I believe. Okay. First thing I'm going to do is paint this with the antiquing cream. The antiquing cream works... In such a way that you paint it on and let it dry then you can come back with a baby wipe or a, a damp cloth and wipe away the um, outer surface and it stays behind just in the cracks and crevices so this is a piece of <laughs> it's a backing off a shipping label so it's you know non-stick All right, I'm just going to put a dollop. And I got my paintbrush, which is wet, but I wiped the ferrule off. All right. Just to thin it down just the tiniest bit. As you can see, it doesn't go on completely solid which is fine and because eventually I'll put a back on the piece I'm not going to paint the back alright but what I am going to do is kind of stipple around on the detail and um, that will help to cover your brush strokes because as you can sorry as you can see the sand dollar has a five-pointed star in the center so I'm kind of wanting that to show up a little bit. All right, I'm going to let this dry. You can dry it with a heat gun or you can just be patient and wait. It doesn't take very long. And then I'll be back to um, wipe it away. All right. One thing I did want to say is you can do this with regular acrylic paint and just wipe it away while it's still damp. You can even just wipe away the antiquing cream while it's still damp. It's just designed um, that you can do it once it's dry. Um, it will need to be sealed, although. Alright. Alright, now I've just got the towel that I use to wipe off dyes and paints. And I've just got a squirt bottle with some water in it. I'm going to squirt the edge of the towel.
you can wipe away more or less color. It's your own personal preference. how it stayed in the detail really nicely all right so next I'm gonna add some sand but the face that I'm using is just the one I resculpted from the Sculpey mold I'm gonna want it up here and I'm gonna do her hair kind of down and around the edges just maybe to here so I'm going to try to stay away from that area with the sand. Alright, so I'm just going to use some glossy accents. This is a really good glue when you just want to adhere something to the surface of polymer clay. You're not trying to glue two pieces of clay together or to glue a bale or anything like that on the back. You're just wanting to glue something light detail. Sand, moss, anything like that. Now people tell me all the time to just stick a pin in it and I don't know why I don't do that but just don't <laughs> I probably should huh. so I'm just gonna add a little here and there in kind of a wiggly design <laughs> now this sand doesn't have a coarseness or anything like that labeled on it so it's a relatively fine sand but I'm sure beach sand will work just fine this sand comes in many many colors Just a bit more. That's a little better. Alright, once again, I'm just going to set it aside and let it dry. Okay, this sand dollar was um, created using amazing casting resin, which is safe to heat in the oven to polymer clay temperatures. Um, I'm not sure exactly what the specifications are. I do, I do know the clear um, is like 400 or something, so... It's perfectly safe. I'm going to using some bacon bond I'm going to glue the face down 
not glue it, but it'll be glued when it's heated. So just a little on the bottom edge. And then I'm going to take a little of this brown clay. I, I did intend to tell you, um, her face is blue, but that's not necessarily the color it's going to be. So I've got just a bit of brown clay that I'm going to condition and roll out. And literally just a small amount. All right, I'm also going to add a bit of bacon bond to the sand dollar. All right, first I'm going to lay the face down. And then I'm going to trim around it with my exacto, with my craft knife, sorry. Then I'm going to place it on the sand dollar. Now the bacon bond does want to slide around a little bit. But if you give it just a bit of wiggle and pressure, that will counteract that. Alright. At this point you can decide to bake it if you want. I'm not going to, but... You can if you're worried about it wheeling around while you're doing the hair. Alright. Okay, since I can't um, really find a color that I want for her hair, I'm going to mix some of this Primo Accents in the rose, I believe it's the rose gold. It's the rose something. <laughs> it's the rose gold glitter. And a little bit of brown primo. Which has gone kind of crumbly sitting here on my desk. All right, so just a small amount of the brown. With a bar of the rose gold glitter. All right, so comparatively a small amount of the brown. through my pasta machine. After I flatten it out a little bit. <laughs> okay, my battery died, but all you missed is me cutting out the other half of the hair. So, no biggie. Put a little more bacon bond.
Okay, as you can see, it's way too brittle to even curl. Now I've got this tool, I don't know what it's called, I just got it off a of Wish for a couple of bucks. Now I'm just going to cut a couple of extra strands of hair to give it a little bit more detail. Once again, over it with the tool. I'm not sure on my thoughts on this good or clay. It may just be because it's old, but it's rather difficult to work with. Alright, now I'm just going to take a little bit and I just formed it into a little tapered longer than an egg shape. Let's see if I can get this where you can see it. All I'm going to do give it some diagonal hash marks to sort of simulate a seashell. Again, I'm going to add some bacon bond to the back side. And do another one for the other side.
She's looking pretty cute. I'm just going to re-roll this through the pasta machine. If I can even get it to re-roll. Alright, I've got a little tiny light blue stone. Which its color will change slightly. Alright, I've got this jewel picker. That's what it's called. I use it all the time. I probably should know that. Alright, just set it in place with a drop of bacon bond underneath. And then I'm going to give it some pressure to embed it into the clay. Alright, can you see that? Alright, now I've rolled out the rest of the copper clay. Alright, now I'm going to move this out of the way for a minute. And I'm going to bring in my texture stamp. I apologize that I can't tell you where to get this. I'm pretty sure it's been discontinued. If it hasn't, somebody will let me know. I bought it years ago at Michael's. Alright. Because this isn't quite tall enough, I'm going to Try gently, gently to stretch it a bit. Because it's so brittle, I don't want it to tear. Alright, let's see about that. be good enough. So I'm going to be pretty generous with the bacon bond on the back of this. I say generous, as generous as you can be with this really thick bottle of bacon bond.
All right, I'm just marking through where I want to cut out because I want the light to show through those areas. Now I'm going to cut back towards the sand dollar right here so I can make sure the backing won't show from the front side. Now, I need to do the same thing up here at the top. Alright, now let's flip it over and see what we've got. Well, it's not bad. There's a little bit missing right here. Brush. So as not to damage the details that you've worked so hard putting in. Alright, I've got a little stubborn bit right here on the side of her face. Alright, she's ready to bake. I bake at 270 for 40 minutes using an oven thermometer in my oven. Alright, I'll be back to show you what she looks like once she's baked, which will basically be exactly the same. And here she is out of the oven. And I'm going to once again with the Deco Art Media Antiquing Cream, I'm going to antique her face. This time I want the paint really watery. about like that. and do a touch on the hair and I try to stay away from where I put the sand 
Although, antiquing the sand wouldn't be the worst thing. Alright, this time I'm just going to use a paper towel. And blot the excess. Just to give her a little depth to her face. Okay, and one of the questions I get asked probably the most is, do I need to seal it? Anytime you add a surface treatment, you probably want to seal it. Acrylic paints are probably the exception. You don't necessarily have to seal acrylic paints. The only reason you'd want to is so that it doesn't get scratched. Alright, this is just a really crappy paintbrush. <laughs> But it's what I had handy. This sealer is Golden's. And normally I don't ever spend the money on a high quality product like this. But this Golden's Polymer Varnish with UVLs in the matte is truly, truly matte. It has no significant finish to it whatsoever. Once it dries, you won't even be able to tell it's on there. And one of the things I often say when you're glazing a piece, don't over brush it. Don't go back and forth, back and forth, trying to get rid of your brush strokes. Because all you're doing is adding more brush strokes. Alright. Then I'm actually going to do a gloss on the hair because it's a glitter. If you use the matte varnish on it, you will dull out the glitter so it won't sparkle near as much. I've got this Diamond Flecto Varathane varnish, which I actually got off of Polymer Clay Express. I'm not sure they still sell it. <laughs> Because I did notice after I purchased it, the um, the listing disappeared. But it's a very thin. quite watery varnish that gives a nice bit of shine.
also when you varnish <clears throat> it's best to never use your heat gun you can bubble the varnish so easy now as you can see this where I put the mat is almost dry and almost completely invisible still got a little to dry here all right so there she is she turned out really nice all right I hope you've enjoyed this until next time bye now